Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover how to use Cubase 12 as your digital audio workstation. We'll work through this on a beginner level for those who are not familiar with the software at all, then show some of the advanced tools as we go along. This series is going to be using the Cubase 12 Pro version of the software, but a lot of it will be applicable to other versions as well. If you're looking to follow along with the Pro version, you can try it out with a 30-day trial mode with no restrictions by clicking on a link on the Steinberg website. To get started with Cubase 12, we need to get it installed on our computer. To do this, go to the Steinberg website and download the Download Assistant. From the Steinberg Download Assistant, sign into your Steinberg account. If you don't have an account, you will need to make one on the website before launching the Download Assistant. This account is where all your licenses are stored, and it will be needed to use the trial version of the software for a 30-day period or to activate licenses that you either purchased or were included with hardware such as your audio interface. The Steinberg Download Assistant will ask you to log in through the web browser, then open a link from the web browser that will send that information to the Steinberg Download Assistant. Give it permission to do this after logging in and you'll be logged in in that program. If you're using an activation code from a product, add the code at the top left to activate your license and tie it to your account. Cubase 12 LE can be included with some Steinberg audio interfaces, but other versions of the digital audio workstation usually need to be purchased on the website. There are quite a bit of different features in the Pro version that are not available in the LE version of Cubase. All of these details for the versions are available on the Cubase website. This tutorial series will apply to all versions, but in some cases we may cover some features that are not available as it will be done in the Pro version. If you would like to follow along, you can activate a 30-day trial period of Cubase for free. From the left side, select the version of Cubase you would like to install and click on it. Then on the right side, select Install All at the top. Give the software a few minutes to install everything. You may need to give it permission to make changes on Windows through an additional pop-up. As it installs, you'll be asked to select your preferred audio interface for the inputs and outputs you'll be using. If you have multiple devices connected, you'll only be able to use one at a time. Once we're done, we can launch the Cubase program. The first dashboard window that opens gives us recent projects and templates for recording, scoring, production, and mastering. If we go to More on the right, we can select our empty template. At the bottom, we can select where on the computer the project will be stored. After we select the empty template and folder, Cubase will launch, and this is the window that we'll get. Let's start off with making sure our devices and settings are set appropriately. With the project started, let's look at where we can configure our audio interface. This is needed if we need to change the driver modes or use a different device. In my case, I need to know where this is located because I do recordings with both a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 audio interface and the Avid 11 Rack Guitar Amp Simulator. To access the audio device controls, go to the Studio menu at the top of Cubase and select Studio Setup at the bottom of the list. If you haven't already done so, this is where you select the ASIO audio interface. To change the audio interface, click on Audio System on the left, then from that window, you click on the ASIO driver to select the device you have connected. If it's not showing up, make sure the device is connected and the drivers are installed, and then try restarting Cubase. Here I can select between my audio interfaces being the Avid 11 Rack and Focusrite USB interface. There's an option below to release the driver when the application is in the background. I don't have that selected, but it can be used if you have multiple programs running requiring an ASIO driver at the same time. Below we have the latency settings for our audio interface. These settings can sometimes be controlled by our audio interface's driver. Under the advanced options we have our interface set to 32-bit float. Multiprocessing is used to take advantage of the multiple CPU cores in our computer. ASIO Guard helps reduce latency by pre-processing audio such as effects applied to our track. It does not affect the latency of real-time instruments besides by offloading some of the CPU power. Other controls such as audio priority and disk preload won't need to be adjusted for our audio interface. 
we can select the actual device under the audio system indicator on the left. This gives us the interface's control panel, which can adjust its sample rate and buffer size. We'll also see the input and output latency. Most devices you'll use in a home studio will not be externally clocked, so we'll leave this unselected. Direct monitoring allows us to monitor our inputs through our audio interface so there's no latency with Cubase controlling it. Some audio interfaces will allow for this, while others will not. The list at the bottom shows us our audio interface's available tracks, and I keep all of these selected to be able to use them. MIDI devices, particularly USB keyboards, are basically plug and play with Cubase. We just connect the USB keyboard to the computer and Cubase will recognize it without even needing to restart the program. Other options for connecting MIDI controllers are going through an audio interface with MIDI cables. The MIDI port setup section of the studio setup shows us all the MIDI devices on our system and we can use this to select which ones are active. For more advanced tools for audio routing, we can access the audio connections window from the studio menu at the top. For most people recording in a home studio with a single audio interface, these tools here will not be necessary and are beyond what we need to cover in this first video. The last thing we should cover is setting up VST plugins with Cubase. Cubase will automatically search our computer for VST plugins that are installed when it starts, and it will find most plugins that are installed in common locations, but some plugins can be located in other unexpected folders if the developers choose a different folder, and Cubase may not be able to find those. To configure our VST plugins, go to the Studio menu at the top and open the window called VST Plugin Manager. This shows us all the VST effects, VST instruments, and gives us a block list to disable any problematic plugins that are interfering with our program. To add an additional folder path for plugins installed elsewhere, click the settings gear near the bottom left of this window to show the VST2 plugin path settings, and click the plus button at the top right to add a new folder. At this point, we have Cubase launched with the project started and our audio interface is configured. In the next video, we'll cover the layout of Cubase and where to find our most basic tools to get started with recording and editing audio and MIDI. Thanks for checking out this video on setting up Cubase. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. You can also check the video description for links to Cubase and our social media accounts to keep up with all our new content.